Welcome back everyone. For today's video, we are going to be taking a look at some Blitz games that were played before the title Tuesday. Today, September 10th in the great year 2024. Now, the players in question are Fabiano Caruana, who has won the United States Chess Championship at least three or four times. And we have the famous YouTuber Levy Rosman, who is currently in IM and trying to get to the the, to the promised land and become a grand master. So, Levy and Fabiano decided to play a couple of games before Title Tuesday. So you figure Fabiano being number three in the world, he is going to dominate, but it's 3 0 and anything can happen. So, let's start with the first game. So, in the first game, we have Fabiano playing with the white pieces, and now we get the move d4. After d4, Levy plays move f5. Now, Levy trying to experiment, obviously, in online blitz. You want to have some fun, maneuver a little bit, and he decides to play the Dutch defense. Here we get g4 from Fabiano, and now Levy plays this move d5. Now, g4 is generally not considered to be the best move, but it's online blitz. Fabiano obviously trying to have some fun and take Levy out of preparation. So we get d5. Knight c3 played here by Fabiano, and now Levy plays move knight f6. Once again, f takes g4 would probably be very slightly dubious because after h3 here, if you were to take, knight takes h3. Even though white has sacrificed a pawn on the king side, black's king is very loose here. Their idea is like knight f4 and knight g5. You can hit the pawn or go this way and use the open h file. Sample line would be something like c6, for example, and after knight g5, knight f6. Bishop f4, let's just say you play bishop f5 to illustrate the point. There's f3 with e4, and if you play a move like queen to a5 stopping e4 after queen d2, knight bd7, white will go e4 anyway. You get bishop g6, and now after knight to e6, you'll notice that black is lacking in development here, and there's a big threat of knight c7 going for the fork of the king and the rook. So Levy obviously trying to avoid any of this stuff, and he plays move knight f6, and now we get the move bishop g2. After bishop g2, Levy decides to take the pawn here, and now we get the move h3. Now, keep in mind, one of the reasons that Levy is happy to now capture the pawn is that white has wasted time by putting this bishop on g2. White cannot go to h3 in one jump like he would in other lines. So we get takes h3. Now Levy plays move c6, and here Fabiano goes queen d3. Now, you'll notice from the evaluation bar, the computer thinks white is better if you were to play e4. But remember, this is a 3-0 blitz game. There is no increment, and Fabiano is generally not the fastest player out there, so he wants to try and conserve his time. So we get queen d3. Levy plays knight to a6 here, and now we get the move a3, a logical move as it stops black from playing knight b4 to fork the queen and the pawn. Here, Levy goes queen d6, and now I now the idea is quite straightforward. Levy wants to move the bishop and castle the king to the queen side. So we get bishop g5 here from Fabiano, and now Levy goes bishop d7. We get castles, castles, and at this point, we are out of the opening phase of the game. Fabiano is down a pawn against Levy Rosman, and we may be getting a classic meme here where the number three player in the world is going to lose to a lowly IM and a random YouTuber. Oh, the horror. So... After castles, we get to move bishop to h4, being played here by Fabiano. The idea is to go bishop g3 and harass this queen on d6, and now we get to move e5. Here, Fabiano plays bishop g3, and now Levy takes complete advantage by playing this move e4, attacking the queen on d3, and the bar is showing that Fabiano is in some serious trouble here, because now the center of the board is very close, so even when white moves the queen away, and you go queen e6, there really are no threats. You can't attack if you could magically move the knight, let's just say set up a position like this with the pawn on c4, there would always be some ideas to try and open up the c file here or attack. There's a lot of pressure in the center of the board, but with the pawn being on c2, that is simply not the case. So if we go back to the game here without this pawn on c4, black's connect four in the center of the board combined with a big black center is simply very strong. So Fabiano plays e3 here, trying to develop the knight while supporting his pawn chain in the center of the board. We get the move bishop d6, Knight GE2, and now Levy plays Knight C7. Now, at this point, everything is going Levy's way here. He's up a pawn on the king side here. White has no attack whatsoever. You can even put a rook on the F file just to illustrate the point where you get a rook on F8, and now this pawn on F2 is always an issue. So Levy has no problems, and he should go on to win against the number three player in the world, keep in mind. So we get knight f4 here from Fabiano. Levy plays queen e7, and now we get the move h4 being played. The idea behind h4 is to create the classic bastion here for the knight on f4. If you were to play king b1, black can always play g5, kicking the horse out of dodge, and black is winning after knight e2. Takes, let's just say takes, and something like h5, h4. Levy will start pushing his p, and Fabiano will be scared. So after knight f4, we get queen e7, h4 here, and now Levy plays the move g6. This is a move designed to potentially play h6 and g5 down the road. Um, if you were to play h6 first, you would walk into knight g6, which forks the king, which forks the queen 
and the rook so after h4 we get the move g6 here Fabiano plays king to b1 and now we get the move knight to e6 now Levy is doing everything correctly here he's trying to trade off the pieces on the f and the g files here and with this extra pawn in the long run if you can trade off all the heavy material you will be winning so we get knight c to e2 here we have king to b8 being played by Levy we get rook c1 Fabiano desperate to play c4 and open up the queen side and now we get the move b5 being played to prevent that here Fabiano plays Bishop f1 now you might have noticed here that Levy is down a lot of time on the clock and I think the issue here is that Fabiano knows he's losing on the board so if you're losing on the board what can you do you got to start playing for the cheese on the clock like Grandmaster Hikaru so we get Knight to g7 here another excellent move from Levy trying to go Knight to f5 here and go after this Bishop on the diagonal and here Fabiano plays Knight c3 we get Knight to f5 and now we have the move Bishop e2 King to a being played another nice move by Levy here sidestepping any real threats on either this diagonal or on the B file additionally you can go rook b8 and b4 and try to create your own attack so we get the move bishop to h2 now we have b4 being played by Levy we get knight to a4 and now we have the move rook b8 at this point Levy is completely winning on the board he has a queen side attack here the king side is very stable with the extra pawn here and it's going to take a bit of a miracle for Fabiano not to lose the game so Fabiano goes b3 we get knight takes h4 being played now we have the move knight takes pawn we get pawn takes knight takes takes and here the move rook takes h4 at this point Levy takes the knight on a4 we get pawn takes bishop and now after b takes a3 we've had a major simplification here if we do the count black has a deux trois quatre cinq six set and white has a deux trois quatre cinq so white has two less pawns here in this position and black has an open b file potentially a kebab with rook b2 and levy is on his way to one of his most memorable victories in online chess so we got the move king to a1 levy plays rook to b2 creating the kebab here on the seventh rank attacking everything and now we have the move queen c3 being played after queen c3 levy goes rook fb8 lining up the double stack and or potentially the triple stack with queen b6 here we get bishop b5 from fabiano levy plays move king b7 and this is a move that levy plays after a 15 minute 15 second think I should say not 15 minute and this is a move which really hurts Levy Levy at this point has 30 seconds on the clock if he were to play his move a6 very quickly and not see the boogeyman with bishop c6 and king a7 or even queen queen a5 for example where you can go king a7 here if he doesn't see this this the danger here and he just plays a6 immediately he would win the game but instead he spends 15 seconds sort of second guessing himself being a little bit of a doubting Thomas with king b7 and now he's only down to 15 seconds for the rest of the game Fabiano plays rook h1 we got a6 now we have bishop to e2 and here Levy plays rook c8 at this point we get queen to a5 from Fabiano and now Levy plays move queen b6 an excellent move with only 10 seconds on the clock because here if Fabiano is able to keep major pieces on the board queens rooks and everything he will win this game because he will be able to create threats towards the a6 pawn or something like rook b1 or c4 and Levy is going to have to burn time when he goes queen b6 this essentially forces the trade of the queens here if white were to play queen to d2 for example black and sack the rook with rook to a2 check king takes rook and after queen b2 we get the classic lolly checkmate on b2 so Fabiano's to trade the Queens Levy takes he's got 10.5 seconds here Fabiano's 54 seconds on the clock Levy is completely winning with the Rooks on the seventh rank the pawns on the King side but can he get it done in time so we get the move Bishop to d1 now we have h5 we get Rook to b1 takes takes and we get the move King to a5 as you can tell it's a big race against the clock here for Levy and he's trying desperately to win before he runs out of time we get King a2 King b4 and now we have King b1 King c3 King a2 and Levy plays the move King d2 here Fabiano takes on a3 and now we get this move a5 and Fabiano goes c4 now this is a move that I don't like by the way playing c4 here because what it does is after c4 black can now take with the pawn and black is a very simple plan to push this pawn up the board and with 5.5 seconds left it will be very close so we get d5 knight takes d5 is played we have king to a2 and now we get the move rook to b8 king to a3 and here Levy goes knight c3 Fabiano plays f4 here desperate to find a way to keep the game going 2.8 left and Levy plays n peasant here using one second now the 1.8 seconds left here Levy is very very close to winning but the problem is that there's no actual checkmate in this position if white were to take the pawn for example you could you could get this rook b3 in one go that would be mate but white does not have to move the bishop so here we get the move rook to h2 Levy takes and now we get rook h1 king d2 rook h2 and the move king d3 excellent technique from Levy to avoid any rook trades here and now there's a simple mate and uno with the move rook to b3 here we get the move rook to b2 and this is a move that I don't like from Fabiano I'm going to be honest that this is the sort of position 
that if, if you're playing this from a pure bullet perspective, you have to play the move rook to d2 check, hoping for king takes d2 and a stalemate where your king has no squares to move to. Because when you play rook to b2, now black can take, and Levy still is 0.4. We get takes, and at this point, unfortunately for Levy, he flags with, with 0.4 left. He doesn't get the pre-moves in. At this point, I believe that if they were top bullet player like Andrew Tang or Ali Reza Farouge or Daniel Naroditsky were playing, they would have won this game because you can get the checkmate in time, which is you go f2 pre-move king here f1 pre-move king b2 and then you check and mate now whether he would have been able to get all these move off off in time i'm not sure i think he had 0 0.4 0 0.5 but it would have been probably one move if most that determines the difference between a win and a loss but unfortunately after king takes b2 levy loses on the clock and he loses the first game of this match despite the fact that he outplayed fabiano from start to finish now for levy he should be very happy because when you outplay a top player from start to finish like this a number three player in the world specifically it just shows that at times you can play at a very high level all right so let's move to the second game of the match now in the second game of the match we once again have levy and fabiano playing this time levy has the white pieces and the game starts with the move c4 in this position here Fabiano plays b6 we get d4 bishop b7 and now we have the move knight c3 e6 and f3 now for Levy it's very clear he's studied a lot of these systems like b6 and e6 first of all because I think he's played them a little bit with black and or done some basic courts on them but additionally he recently played a tournament in Italy where the famous Italian grandmaster Alberto David played a similar setup and Levy went for this big white center really early on and he had a resounding victory so here we got the move bishop to b4 and now we have this move a3 takes takes knight f5 and now we get the move e3 now sorry i was about to say knight f6 but i had the order wrong here now the main point here for for levy is that he has the two b's the bishops on c1 and f1 but he's also trying to build a big white center here now we recently did a recap um of the match played in speech as championship finals between ali reza Ferusha and magnus carlson where ali reza went for a similar setup it was slightly different i think it was something like this where he got this massive big white center but the big danger of the big white center is that you have these pawns stacked and black can always try to go after this pawn on c4 so after f5 here levy doesn't even get his big white center with e4 but nonetheless he's able to play the move e3 we got the move knight to f6 now we have the move bishop to d3 castles and the move knight to e2 here fabiano goes c5 we get the move castles and now the move knight c6 at this point we're now out of the opening phase of the game both players have more or less developed their pieces and honestly at this point i probably very slightly prefer to be black due to the chaos in the center of the board and white having to figure out how to activate this beat whether it's via e4 or a4 so levy decides to play a4 here potentially going a5 potentially going bishop a3 and now fabiano plays the move d6 here levy plays queen to e1 and now we get the move g6 being played this is a move that i'm not a big fan of from fabiano i understand conceptually why he played it his idea was probably he thought well i'm going to go e5 here and the pawn doesn't hang because if you play e5 right away here um after queen one e5 here white can simply take the juicer and he's much better but when you go g6 now white can play queen g3 we got the move e5 d5 knight to e7 and after the move e4 is played suddenly the diagonals around the black king are becoming extremely weak here and and fabiano is desperate to try and close the queen side with this move f4 unfortunately for fabiano levy's ideas here are a little bit too easy and levy really starts to turn it on here he goes queen to h4 with the idea of playing g3 if white were to move the queen away to e1 after g5 followed by knight g6 and h5 just to set it up something like this black is actually doing very well it starts to look, look like a king's indian where black is attacking on the king side here and white's king is going to become very vulnerable but levy plays queen to h4 we get rook f7 and now an all-star move from levy playing g3 here ripping open this diagonal for the dark square b here and because fabiano is missing his fianchitoed bishop unlike in the king's indian there's no b on g7 fabiano is in a world of hurt so fabiano trades and now he goes bishop c8 here levy plays bishop g5 a great move putting a lot of pressure on this diagonal with the bishop and the queen fabiano plays queen f8 and now levy goes for the crusher with this move f4 opening up the f file while while maintaining all this pressure towards the knights on f6 and e7 here fabiano takes levy plays rook takes pawn and now everything is going levy's way here he's going to bring the rook to f1 with a double stack d's knights are super soft on f6 and e7 and as you guys can tell from the valuation bar fabiano is simply getting cooked hard by the youtuber so knight g4 is played here now levy plays move rook a f1 with a double stack fabiano plays knight f5 and here levy takes the knight on f5 
At this point, we get G takes F5. And now Levy sacks the Rook with Rook takes G4. We get Pawn takes Rook. And here the move Bishop takes H7 is played. And Fabiano Caruana, the number three player in the world, resigns the game against the YouTuber Levy Rosman. Now, a resounding victory for Levy in this game. Just an immense performance from start to finish here. It's very clear that... that Fabiano was not taking this game super seriously. It is a casual blitz game after all. But Levy shows great understanding of a lot of the positional ideas when he gets these structures. And I actually would say for people who are going to be playing Levy in upcoming terms, trying to play the systems with B6 and E6, I don't think it actually makes a lot of sense because it's very clear that Levy is super well prepared in such setups, whether it's because he's looked at from the black side or it's because opponents he's played recently have done it. It just seems like one of those structures which he's very comfortable in and he's getting great positions. So a perfect game from Levy. I haven't actually checked to see what it says in the review. I'll check very quickly. Let's see what the review says. His accuracy should be very high. It's funny, though, that when I look at the accuracy, it now says Levy's accuracy is 76.7, probably because he missed one or two easy wins along the way. But nonetheless, a fantastic performance um, from, from, from start to finish for Levy in this game that he wins. So with that win, they split the two games. It's one-to-one -one when all is said and done between Fabiano and... Um, Fab, uh, wrong game between Fabiano and Levy and uh, they would both go on to play in title twos a bit but nonetheless it shows how good Levy can be in blitz if he gets a position where he's straightforward ideas and why many of us do think he has a chance to become grandmaster down the road because in one-off situations he's definitely capable of playing at a very high level so on that note, I hope you guys have enjoyed this recap from the Blitz match played today, September 10th, 2024, between the number three player in the world, Fabiano Caruana, and the YouTuber Levy Rosman, also known as Gotham Chess. If you are not already subscribed to my channel, make sure that you smash that subscribe button below, and we'll be back with some more great recaps in the very near future. I'll see you guys soon. Have a good one. Bye.